Welcome to this video series, where I will be showing you how I designed and built an electric skateboard and remote controller. In this video I will be showing you how I made the first version of the remote, which I later on decided to scrap and redesign completely. But more on that in the end of this video. The remote will be based on an Arduino Nano, which is able to communicate with the skateboard through Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi module I'm using is called NRF24L01 and runs at 2.4 GHz. The battery is a lithium ion 18650 cell with a capacity of 3100 mAh. The battery is plugged into a so called battery shield, which is able to do the charging as well as convert the battery voltage to a steady output of 3.3V and 5V. There are three sets of output pins on each side of the module. By using a 5V power supply, I am able to connect it directly to the VIN pin on the Arduino. The NRF module runs at 3.3V and could therefore be powered by the 3.3V output pin on the Arduino. But since I've heard it's more reliable to use an independent power source for the NRF module, I decided to connect it directly to the 3.3V pin on the battery shield. In order to control acceleration and braking of the board, I will be using a potentiometer. And to turn the system on and off, I will be using a slide switch. At last, there will be two buttons in the system. One of them will act as a deadman switch, which has to be held down at all times, and when released, it will bring the board to a full stop. The second button is for cruise control. When pressed, the RPM of the motor in the skateboard will be read by the built-in Hall effect sensor. The Arduino will then tell the electronic speed controller to try and hold that RPM until the button is released. At first, I was not able to read any values from the output pins on the battery shield. But then I realized you had to plug it into a charger at least once in order for it to start working properly. The slide switch on the battery shield turns the USB port on and off. I decided to remove the USB port as well as the slide switch in order to save some space in the controller. The case will be 3D printed, and the sides will be see-through, made from polycarbonate glass. Having see-through sides will enable me to see the battery status and the charging status from the LEDs on the battery shield. I desoldered the pins from the NRF module and prepared the potentiometer by removing some of the excess metal pins, and then I flattened out the connectors since the potentiometer will be laying flat against the case. I made quite a few 3D printed prototypes during this project, both of the case and of the individual components that will go inside of it, starting with the return to center mechanism for the acceleration controlling potentiometer, as well as an adapter for normal breadboard push buttons, and a prototype of the control wheel that will go on top of the potentiometer. Everything will be assembled in the bottom half of the controller, and the top half of the controller will go on top of that and everything will be held together with three screws. If I decide that I want to make some changes to the code in the future, I can just remove the lid and plug the USB into the Arduino. This version was printed with a spring-loaded arm that will push against the control wheel on top of the potentiometer.
The Arduino will be positioned in a small holder that is held in place by four studs on the bottom insert. And this is what the final assembly will look like. And then it was time to put everything together. In the final version, I decided to print the case in black while keeping the buttons white. After assembling the remote, I started working on the code, and after some time I got it to successfully communicate with another Arduino connected to my computer. But while I was holding and testing the remote, I came to the conclusion that there were certain aspects that I was not satisfied with, that could not be fixed with the current set of components. And it was at this point I decided that I wanted to make a version 2 of the remote. I would really like to reduce the size and weight of the controller. The current battery has a capacity of 3100 mAh, which probably could run the remote for more than 100 plus hours, which is way more than I need. Secondly, I would want the remote to be more ergonomic. This time, I started by arranging the electrical components in a specific configuration, and then made a case to fit that. Next time, I'm going to start by finding a shape of the case that I like, and then try to fit the components inside of that somehow. I also want more programmable buttons, so that I can add additional functions in the software later on, such as different power modes, reversing, etc. And at last, I want a screen to see current speed, distance traveled and more. So look out for the second episode if you want to see the newer and improved remote.